Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to take a look at uh, some different types of forces. Um, first, before we get there, I didn't write this in, but uh, hopefully you already know. But if you don't, the definition of a force is a push or a pull. Something that's pushing on something or pulling on something. All right, let's get into the six types of forces. Before I do that, I'm not going to go through examples from each one. I'm going to talk about them in the context of these six forces. Um, the questions will say something like, there is a book resting on a desk. Which of these six forces is present? Okay, and so you'll have to know about each of these three and then the uh, three on the next two slides. So first, uh, normal force. Normal actually is a word that means perpendicular, a mathematical term. It doesn't mean like ordinary. It means perpendicular. So a perpendicular force between two objects in contact. So if you take your hands and push them against each other, like when you clap or if you're just pushing them, anytime you're touching something else, you're putting some amount of force on it. The most common place you're going to see that is um, uh, like something resting on a surface or that's on a surface, then those two objects are pushing into each other. In this case, we're talking about forces on the book. So we see the normal force here, normal. You see it's F sub N is the way they wrote that. Um, but normal force is pushing up on the book. It'd be pushing down on the desk, but we don't care what's happening to the desk. We care at the moment what's happening to the book. Okay, so anytime you see two objects that are in contact, they will be pushing each other, and you should click normal force. Next kind of force is frictional force, which is another force between two objects in contact, only this time it is a parallel force. So the first example here does not have a frictional force, because this book is not moving or attempting to move sideways. Friction is the little bumps on the bottom of the book interacting with the little bumps on the table as they would slide back and forth. But if it's just resting there, there's no sideways frictional force. However, down here in the bottom one, we see that gravity is trying to pull it down the slope. And so there is a frictional force. I'll just put frick. Frictional force uh, keeping it from going there. The little bumps on the wood are bumping into the little bumps on the book. They could be molecular sized bumps or slightly bigger, um, keeping it from sliding down the slope. Okay. Or if it was sliding down the slope, they would be trying to slow it down so it doesn't slide down quite as fast. Okay. So if you see an object on a slope like this, or something that's moving, like if this book was sliding across the table, whether it's speeding up or slowing down, if it's moving across a table or across a surface, or if it's or if it's on a slope, either one of those two will cause there to be a frictional force trying to resist the motion. Okay, either the motion that's happening or the motion that could happen because of the slope. Finally, there is the gravitational force. We see that the gravitational force, if an object is on Earth, of which is all the examples you have, then there is a significant gravitational force. Gravita gravity, we'll learn later, is a force between any two objects. So technically, if there's another object nearby, even if it's not a planet, there would be some gravitational force. Just for things like you and me, it'd be pretty small. So, But since they're all on Earth, they all have gravity, and that force is pushing downward always. Okay, so gravity is pushing downwards. If you're in a more advanced uh, class, you might talk about components of gravity, and you'll see stuff like that. If not, don't worry about it. Okay, but for every single uh, problem you do, click gravity, because these are all on the surface of Earth. All right, our next, our fourth kind of force is tension. So tension is a force exerted through a rope, chain, wire, or cable. So for the purpose of this uh, concept builder, if you see it mention a wire, a cable, a chain, or a rope, then there's tension. Okay. Now, one tricky thing is if there is a person here pulling on the rope and they say what forces are on this, then it would be tension, um, tension of the rope pulling on it. Um, but we would not pretend like this person is pulling on the object. That'll come up in the next one. 
All right. So, but anytime you see a rope, the fact that this little bit of rope pulls on this little bit of rope pulls on that little bit of rope. And so you've got a hundred newtons of tension in this rope, each little bit pulling on the bit next to it. That's the idea of tension. Okay. Next, we have applied force. Okay, so applied force is a force that someone intentionally applies to the object. Like in this example here, this person is applying a force to the little toy car. Okay, in our last example, the person down here pulling on the rope is not applying a force to this. The tension is putting the force on this. And there are some questions like that. So if you see somebody pulling on a rope, the tension is pulling on the person, the thing, not the person. That's how they signify it in this uh, in, on physicsclassroom.com. The final one that you'll see, it, oh yeah, so just if you see somebody pushing something or pulling something, it means there's an applied force, unless they're pulling using a rope. Okay. All right. Uh, air resistance force is our final type of force. This is a force that comes from air molecules bumping into the object. If you've ever driven on the freeway and stuck your hand out the window, you can feel the air molecules bumping into your hand. So that's the idea. They're putting a force on your hand. Any object that, that is moving will be uh, bumping into the air since, ever, since all of these are on Earth. So if the object is moving, it's bumping into the air and there's air resistance. So for air resistance, that's what you ask yourself each time. Is this moving? Then since this is moving, there's little air molecules that this is bumping into. And that would mean there's a force of air resistance on this uh, person. Force of air resistance pushing on the car. Applied force pushing on the car. All right. Oh, by the way, this would also have gravity pulling on the car. It would have friction pushing on the car. And it would have a normal force pushing on the car along with the air resistance and the applied. So that would have five of the six right there. The only thing missing is tension. All righty. Um, have fun puzzling those out. Uh, if you are starting to miss one, go back and check each of the ones that you got, each of the ones you didn't think were there, and make sure that you've uh, looked at the question that I suggested thinking about for each of the types of forces. And if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. If you enjoyed this and you were able to do well on recognizing forces, please click that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you the next time on the Scientific Adventures of Beard